Praise the Lord. How many of us were the weekend uh, revival uh, yesterday and today? Where are you? Where behind that me? All the prayers that were prayed and all the testimonies that we heard be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. But you know, we must always make connection between what we have heard and what we say. What we have heard yesterday and today, there is solution. Solution for every problem. And so, as you have got the solution, I believe you've got the solution. I got it. As you have got the solution, you will not come back to Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2. That the ears of the Lord are not heavy. And it is not that he cannot hear, but your sins and your iniquities have withheld good things from you. Already we have crossed that bridge. And so when you get back to the house fellowship tomorrow, you ask how many of them were at the house fellowship, at the revival, and the power night. Look at the double dose. Power night, weekend revival. If they were there, and then we're reading to them again, your sins have withheld good things from you. I thought we just got all the good things during this week. And it is permanent. I'm looking at somebody there. I said it is permanent. I understand if it's in our outline, we still have to read. But then we will explain that this is reaching to people who have not got solution. But since you have got solution, your sins are forgiven, you have the peace of God, and your solution will abide in Jesus' name. In that way, we're making connection with what we just learned at the weekend, and then the house fellowship um, review. Not only that, if you have five people, ten people in the house fellowship, and you have been meeting with them every week for this year, and they have been with you, you have been teaching them, and we're still saying, those who are not saved in the house fellowship, I think if they are not saved, it's your fault. You go to them one by one, connect with them, interact with them, sit with them, and make sure that every one of them is led to assurance of salvation. Our house fellowship members will have victory in Jesus' name. The victory in your life will also spill over into their lives in Jesus' name. Just like the victory in my life will spill over to your life in Jesus' name. You are victorious. You are up. Nothing will bring you down. Don't misunderstand me. Our teacher taught effectively and powerfully. I just need to make that connection. Have you got the connection? Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name. We we'll thank you for our brothers and sisters, our leaders, our workers. We're asking, oh Lord, you do good in every life, even tonight in Jesus' name. Speak to everyone. Teach everyone. Train everyone. And we pray, Lord, your word will work effectively in our mouths in Jesus' name. We we'll thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Jeremiah chapter 8. And we're reading from verse 20. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20. The harvest is past. 
the summer is ended and we are not saved what a cry what sorrow what regret coming from the people of Israel at the time of Jeremiah this time we're in now is harvesting time when souls are being gathered into the kingdom of God yet we need to understand harvesting time will not continue forever the time that remains before the end is short very short the opportunity will soon end then the lost the doomed the damned sinners will cry and cry forever what will be their cry the harvest is past the summer is ended and we are not saved the question is why were they not saved that a good prophet preacher pastor like jeremiah they had a good king at the time of jeremiah josiah they had the word of god being read to them and the prophets of god rising up early in the morning warning them teaching them calling them alerting them waking up them up to, re to repentance and revival because god wanted every israelite every descendant of abraham to be saved those who are not saved were lost because of number one personal decision number two their preachers deception number three the people's dominion they did it they couldn't take personal decision to be saved there wasn't any lack of good preachers although the bad preachers were there there wasn't any lack of knowing the mind of god that he wanted them to be saved and yet many were not saved that's why they cried the harvest is past the summer is ended and we are not saved they lack personal decision if there's anybody in a church today coming to all the meetings hearing us in the house fellowship hearing us on sunday hearing us on monday and other times and if anyone is not saved number one there is the problem of personal decision number two there is the problem of the of the preacher's deception many of the people who are not saved today if they are very close to us and they are near us they're not listening to us alone they're listening to some deceivers over the radio over the television over the internet and in the youtube and all the twister the twitters they're listening to all those things bring deception to them and because of their preachers deception that they're listening to out there if they are not saved that's why they're not saved number three because of people's dominion the people around them not saved not giving themselves to the Lord putting pressure on them peer pressure societal pressure the pressure of sinners and other people on them that they do not have a mind of their own to say I have my life to live I have a hell to shun I have a heaven to get to I have my reckoning day to address because of people's dominion over them they don't have a mind of their own that's why they're crying the harvest is past the summer is ended and we are not saved we're looking at the word of god tonight on the subject 
the great consequence of smooth evangelistic preaching. The great consequence of smooth evangelistic preaching. A lot of evangelism is going on by many churches, many denominations, ours included. And on the street, and the bus, and the taxi, and everywhere, you can hear people evangelizing. And the, in crusades and mass public declaration, we can hear people talking about Christ, and we can hear people talking about salvation. And yet, there is smooth evangelistic preaching. And because of that, people don't really understand what salvation is all about. The great consequence of smooth evangelistic preaching. Three points we're looking at. Number one, subversive endangering manners that cannot secure salvation. Subversive endangering manners that cannot secure salvation. Number two, smooth, enjoyable messages that cannot save sinners. Many people who say they are preaching salvation today, they give what is called motivational talk. Lift people up. Encourage them. Talk about how they'll prosper in life, how they will succeed in life, and then at the end of that smooth talk, they thank on the name of Jesus. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't know how to believe because they have not gone through the path of repentance. Point number two, smooth, enjoyable messages that cannot save souls. Point number three, sound evangelistic ministers that can save souls and sanctify saints. Sound evangelistic ministers that can save souls and sanctify saints. What's number one over there? I said, what's number one, point one over there? God bless you. Subversive and dangerous manners that cannot save souls. Come back to Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20. The harvest is past. The summer is ended and we are not saved the question is why were they not saved and if there is anyone in our midst hearing and hearing we must ask the question why is he not saved if there are people that are listening every time, tuning in every time. I like the message. I appreciate the message. But they are not saved. Why are they not saved? The first reason, the unfaithfulness of their preachers. The unfaithfulness of their preachers. Jeremiah chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 8. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 8 The priest said not Where is the Lord? And they that handle the law Knew me not The pastors also transgressed against me And the prophets prophesied By Baal and watch After things that do not profit this verse tells us that the priests and the preachers and their pastors were not faithful to the word of God. They were not explaining, applying the word of God. They were not bringing conviction to the people they're speaking to. And the law of 
God is not well explained to the people for them to understand, they must repent. And for them to understand what they must repent from, and for them to understand how they will repent, and for them to understand the new life, the change of life after they have repented. Look at verse 11. As a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods, but my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. Because people are turning away their ears from the profitable preaching of the word of God that brings conviction, that makes a man know that he is a sinner and that he cannot save himself and that only Christ can save him and they are turning to sing some messages that will not save look at verse 13 for my people have committed to evils they are forsaking me the fountain of living waters and healed them out cisterns broken cisterns that can hold no water they are turning to modern preaching. They are turning to psychedelic exhortation. They are turning to new age exhortation. And they change the real word of God which leads to repentance. They change the things that will just tickle them, make them happy. Make them worship according to them. Make them dance. There's a lot of music and less convicting message. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. Why? Number two, they are unconcerned for God and his word. Unconcerned for God and his word the people who go to many churches today who attend crusades today who listen to preachers today you think they're seeking god they're seeking success they're seeking progress they're seeking prosperity they're seeking present day happiness they are not seeking god for forgiveness for salvation for righteousness and for entrance to heaven. Look at Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 30. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 30. In vain have I smitten your children. They receive no correction. Your own sword has devoured your prophets like a destroying lion, O generation. See ye the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness unto Israel, a land of darkness? Wherefore, say my people, we are lords, we will come no more unto thee. We are lords, we are masters, and lords of our faith, we will not come unto thee. They had unconcern for God. On concern for the word of God. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. Why? Number three, they are unrepentant conditioning after backsliding. They are unrepentant conditioning after backsliding. Chapter three. I'm reading from verse 6. Chapter 3, verse 6. The Lord also said unto me, In the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel has done? She is gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree. And there has their pledge, there have pledge the harlot. Look at verse 7. And I said, after she had done all these things, turn thou unto me. 
but she returned none and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. They were backsliding and they conditioned their minds not to repent. They made up their minds whatever he says, whatever the prophets declare, whatever the preachers preach, they conditioned their minds not to come back, not to return. And it was because of that unrepentant conditioning of their heart, that's why they couldn't repent. And eventually, the time comes when they cry. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. Another reason why they were not saved, number four, they are unresponsive attitude even in suffering they suffered for their sins and God afflicted them for their sin wanting to use the chastisement to bring them back but they were unresponsive even in their suffering look at chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 18 chapter 4 verse 18 Thy way and thy doings are procured these things unto thee. This is thy wickedness, because it is bitter, because it reaches unto thine heart. Verse 20, destruction upon destruction is cried, for the whole land is spoiled suddenly. And my, and my tent spoiled, and my cottage in a moment. Verse 22. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sorted children. They have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. They go to places of worship. And it appears that they are seeking after God. And they cry out when they hear of the suffering in their land. But that did not lead them to salvation. Chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. Chapter 5, verse 3. O oh Lord... And not thine eyes upon the truth that was tricking them, but they have not grieved. They suffered, but they didn't turn, they didn't repent. That's why they were not saved. God used the word to call them, no response. He used the rod to humble them, but there was no response. That was consumed them and they have refused to receive correction they have made their faces harder than the rock they have refused to return therefore I said surely these are poor they are foolish for they know not the way of the Lord nor the judgment of their God. That's how they cried out. God has done everything he could have done. He has sent messengers to them, his servants, as well as suffering, but they would not repent. They had to cry out. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. But why? Number five, their unyielding commitment to transgression. They were married to sin. They were wedded to iniquity. They were given an abandonment to transgression. And they will not turn. And because of that covenant they had, were sin with iniquity, with transgression, their yielding commitment 
to transgression. That's why they were not saved. Chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 21. Chapter 5, verse 21. Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not, Fear ye me not, says the Lord. Don't you fear me? With all the devastation you have seen, with all the destruction you have seen, with all the rod I laid on your back, fear ye me not, says the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bounds of the sea by perpetual decree that it cannot pass it and though the waves thereof toss themselves yet can they not prevail though they roar yet can they not pass over it the sixth reason they are unchecked love for false prophets. Unchecked love for false prophets. They knew. They knew Jeremiah. They heard Jeremiah. They knew this is the word of God coming from Jeremiah. But they all prefer to kill him, slay him, push him aside, toss him aside. And they knew the false prophets. They knew the deceptive prophets. They can examine their prophecies and their utterances. And they knew their only sugar cottage in their utterances. They're not telling the truth, but they loved to have them. They had unchecked, unrestrained love. For false prophets, sometimes they read about some unthinkable things those preachers have done, those preachers have said. They'll smile, toss us aside. The next day, they want to listen to him again. That's why they are not saved. Look at chapter 5, verse 31. Chapter 5, verse 31. The prophets prophesy falsely. The priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so. My people love to have it so. They listen to deceivers, they listen to false prophets, they listen to those who say there's no need for repentance. There's no need for holiness. Nobody can be holy. Those uh, preachers will laugh and smile and jest and then throw rocks at the people who are preaching like Jeremiah, who are asking for return from sin. Come into the kingdom. These preachers will preach falsely and then the people love to have it so. And what will ye do? In the edge thereof. Another reason they add uncircumcised ears, uncircumcised hearts. Chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 10. Chapter 6, verse 10. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised. They have not allowed me to dig into their ears and to take the natural depravity away and to take the natural resistance away. They block their ears and they will not allow me to unplug the blocks. Their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot hurt him. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. 
they have no delight in it. They have no delight in the word of God. They can enjoy a worship service where dancing and drumming and music and all that goes on for one hour. They cannot endure 30 minutes message in those churches, modern churches, psychedelic churches, and the churches that attract the dancers and the people that are not serious about heaven. Their ears are not circumcised. Their hearts are not circumcised. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, for from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, everyone is giving to covetousness. Tell me how to make more money. Don't tell me about holiness. Tell me how to have prosperity. Don't tell me about pardon from sin, about peace with God. I don't need all that. About purity, about power of the Holy Ghost. I don't need that. Tell me how to get more of the substance of the things of the world. And it says from the prophet, even unto the priests, everyone dealeth falsely. They deceive each other. They deceive one another. Their ears, their hearts are not circumcised. Age, their unprofitable trust in false worship. Unprofitable trust in false worship. They think it's enough once you call the name of God. And they can go after the service and go and commit their regular common sin. We've gone to church, we've paid a deal, we've said hallelujah, we've danced, we've done everything we should have done, and God knows we honor him, and God knows we love him. But after the worship, they go after their regular evil. Chapter 7 of Jeremiah, verse 7. Chapter 7, verse 8. Chapter 7, verse 8. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will ye steal, murder, commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense to unto Baal, and walk after all the gods whom ye know not, and come and stand before me in this house? which is called by my name and say we are delivered to do all these abominations is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes behold even I have seen it says the Lord that was their problem they had unprofitable trust in false worship and they had unwavering devotion to that which God has not commanded. There are things God has commanded. They overlook those things. They shun those things. They disregard those things that God has commanded. But the things he has not commanded, they are head and shoulders into what has not been commanded. And they are consecrated, they are abandoned, and they are totally addicted to what God has not commanded while they overlook what he has commanded. Chapter 7, verse 31. Chapter 7, verse 31. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Enam, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not. Which I commanded them not, neither came each 
into my heart what they are doing and they sacrifice everything they sacrifice time they sacrifice their strength they sacrifice money they sacrifice material things they sacrifice their career they sacrifice their sons they sacrifice their daughters to what i have not commanded them the ones i have commanded they cannot sacrifice their attention and pay attention to what is commanded what is not commanded that is what they sacrifice for look at chapter 8 verse 4 chapter 8 verse 4 moreover thou shalt say unto them thus says the lord shall they fall and not arise shall they turn away and not return why then is this people of jerusalem sliding back by a perpetual backsliding the hold fast deceit the hold fast false worship the hold fast false doctrine the hold fast the wrong opinions of their preachers and they jettison and they reject the real saving word of god they refuse to return they refuse to return that's why the cry come to verse 20 chapter 8 the harvest is past the summer is ended and we are not saved because of the unfaithfulness of their preachers because of their unconcern for god and his word because of their unrepentant conditioning after backsliding because of unresponsive attitude even in suffering because of their unyielding commitment to transgression because of unchecked love for false prophets because of their uncircumcised ears and hearts because of their unprofitable trust in false worship because of unwavering devotion to that which god has not commanded the harvest is past the summer is ended and we are not saved point number two smooth enjoyable messages that cannot save souls edgeless messages their thoughts did not have any edge cannot prick cannot cut cannot convict cannot bring sinners on their faces on their knees crying unto god smooth enjoyable messages that cannot save sinners let's come to jeremiah chapter 8 verse 20. the harvest is past the summer is ended and we are not saved why were well, they are not preachers were well, they are not prophets were well, well, they are not those who were speaking to them about god yes they were what were they preaching come to verse 11 in verse 11 of chapter 8 for they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly saying peace peace when there is no peace the wicked are there the covetous are there abominable people were there and he came to their crusades and he came to their camps and he came to their mass publication and proclamation and they declared to everybody peace peace and there is no peace but why why were they saying that 
are looking at Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 9, verse 10. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. That's a problem. Those preachers discovered if we tell them the word of God, if we emphasize repentance, if we tell them to turn to the Lord, if we tell them about the judgment to come, they will not regard us. We will not be popular. We will not be honored. We will not be regarded by them. These are people that do not want to hear the straight convicting word of the Lord. Verse 10, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us, right six. Keep that. Sound doctrine, keep it. Convicting preaching, keep it to yourself. Right things that will make us repent and seek righteousness, keep that to yourself. Speak unto us smooth things, prophesy the seed. We know it's deception, but tell us. We just want to hear. Tell us things that make us happy. The things that make us forget that there's any judgment anytime anywhere. Teach us things and tell us things that will put us falsely on the throne. That will show us we are happy people and will remain happy. Make it smooth. Give unto us things that are smooth. We're coming to Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. We're reading from verse 17. Smooth, enjoyable messages that cannot save sinners. In chapter 23, verse 17. Verse 17 says, This is chill unto them that despise me. The Lord say, has said, ye shall have a peace. They're talking to those who have despised me, those who have neglected me, and those who are not living like I want them to live. The preachers are telling them, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of their own heart, no evil shall come upon you. They say our God is a God of love, a God of mercy, and a God of total kindness. He's a creator. He created us. And he wants good things for us. And our God, the God of today, the God of their own new covenant and the God of the new generation does not frown at sin. The God of the new generation does not mind whatever you do. But make sure you bring your money, make sure you pay your tithes, and make sure that you worship. And when you come to worship, make sure, make sure that you get up, don't sit down there like a log of wood. Give expression to the fact that you know God is a loving God. And show that. Let your feet show that. Let your hands show that. Let everything inside you show that. That you know that God is a God of love. He's no more angry at anything anybody does. And the people are happy. But that doesn't say that doesn't change anybody's heart. It only puts them in deception. When you tell them, no evil shall come upon thee. Look at verse 20. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he has executed 
until he has performed the thoughts of his heart in the latter day he shall consider it perfectly in the latter day when the judgment comes in the latter day when there's no chance to make any reparation when there's no chance to repent then they will wake up it will be too late verse 21 i have not sent these prophets who are making sinners to be happy sinners to rejoice and they are not leading them to repentance i have not sent these prophets yet they ran i have not spoken to them yet they prophesied and look at verse 32 of that same chapter behold i am against them that prophesy false dreams and people have itching ears and these preachers tickle their ears I have a dream about you, I'll tell you soon. I have a revelation about all those who are coming to this, their assembly. I'll tell you soon. Get ready. And then at the end of that service, they don't tell them. They say, go and tell the people who are still sitting back at home. I have a word from the Lord. And this will change your life. They keep them in suspense. They want them to bring all the other people sitting at home to come and hear something false, something that will make them remain in that evil thing. Behold, I'm against them that prophesy false dreams that says the Lord and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies. They cause my people to forget sound doctrine by their lies. Out of sight is out of mind. A preacher may not say, I don't believe repentance, but if he keeps quiet one whole year, doesn't mention repentance, one whole meeting of maybe all through the time the people are there no repentance somebody has been coming for three years into that assembly and has never heard the word of repentance but he has said about tithes and offering and about giving money and about dancing and about praising the lord about music almost every time and the Lord said, they deceive the people by the lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit these people at all, says the Lord. You see, before anyone can have salvation, there must be sorrow for sin. Why? Conviction always comes before conversion. Conviction always comes before conversion. Sorrow for sin always comes before salvation from sin. Somebody must realize it's a sinner. He must be sorry for that. And he must be dejected because of the judgment that will come as a result of the sinning. Denunciation of self always comes before decision for the Savior. Before you can make a right decision for the Savior, you denounce yourself. And you recognize you are a sinner. That you cannot save yourself. That your sin will destroy you if you don't repent. Denunciation of self will always come before decision for the Savior. Hatred for corruption. Hatred for corruption must always come before holiness of character. In your place of work, you've been corrupt, you've been stealing. 
and then you go to church or you come to church it must be very clear that you are the problem one of the great problems of our country and you must be so convinced that all these sins that are being perpetrated if you had repented and your repentance had influenced other people the country will be better the church will be better that's why hatred for corruption always precedes holiness of character the fear of judgment that judgment is coming all will be there and what account will you give on that final day the fear of judgment must always come before faith in jesus faith in jesus our savior our lord you must fear judgment before you cannot face in him explanation of eternal suffering explanation of eternal suffering hellfire unending eternal infinite suffering in the everlasting lake of fire explanation of eternal suffering you know, always comes before escape from sodom the people are not going to even make any attempt to escape if you don't tell them the Lord has sent these angels to bring fire and judgment upon Sodom. They'll keep on lingering. They'll keep on staying there. But explanation of eternal suffering always precedes escape from Sodom. Hopelessness of self-salvation. Hopelessness in self-salvation. That is, there's no hope if you're trying to save yourself. There's no hope. If you think your good works will save you, it must be very clear to the people we're speaking to, hopelessness of self-salvation always precedes happiness of a saved soul. The happiness of a saved soul. Smooth talk cannot do that. Enjoyable messages cannot do that smooth preaching will never do that and superficial sugar-coated pleasant messages will not convict the criminals of their crime against god and their crimes against humanity that's the reason why we need to speak the word of god very clearly and not deceive people and just make them happy are looking at romans chapter 16 romans chapter 16 verse 18 romans 16 verse 18 for they that are such sad not our lord jesus christ but their own belly and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple just so uh, talking smooth is well for everybody everybody will get to heaven only be faithful that you contribute your deal just so uh, preaching smooth and fair encouraging everybody no standard is maintained on marriage one man one wife no standard is uh, is maintained no divorce and remarriage no standard is maintained if you have stolen government money go back and pay and make sure that your life is right Make sure that if you have anything you've done and the Spirit of God is convicting you, make right your way. If that is not there, all that the preachers want is to swell the crowd, increase their membership, and have cheap church growth. And many of those people in the mega churches, we don't know how many will get to heaven if they are not hearing the truth. Look at that verse 18 again. 
Romans chapter 16 verse 18 for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ but their own belly and by their words good words and fierce speeches deceive the hearts of the simple you will not be a deceiver I will not be a deceiver I said I will not be a deceiver or stand by the word of God in Jesus name point number three now sound evangelistic ministers that can save souls and sanctify saints sound ministers effective ministers truthful ministers that say the right thing and they're not trying to tickle the ears of anyone we're coming to jeremiah chapter 1 verse 8 jeremiah chapter 1 verse 8 be not afraid of their faces for i am with thee to deliver thee says the lord that's one thing a real preacher a true evangelist a scriptural soul winner must have no fear of the faces of the people in verse 9 then the lord put his hand and touched my mouth and the lord said unto me behold i have put my words in thy mouth you will not lack what to say you will not lack the utterance of sound doctrine in jesus name you don't have to go to the youtube to listen to the false preachers what do they say to make people happy and to make people stay in their churches and to swell the crowds it says if you're going to be my servant you're not going to be listening to the people who are deceiving others i have put my words in thy mouth see i have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out to root out if you're overlooking that and you're not rooting out what is evil what is defiling from the hearts of the people you're not doing the work and to pull down if you're not pulling down the strongholds of evil of corruption of depravity you're not doing the work of god and to destroy if you're not destroying the false doctrines i just preach my own even though my people are hearing destructive doctrine doctrines of devils and they're being deceived i don't want to attack anything or anybody you're not serving the lord you're serving yourself and you're afraid maybe they will hear what you are saying if they hear maybe that will help them to repent and to change themselves to destroy and to throw down and then to build and to plant amen chapter 4 jeremiah chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 3 jeremiah chapter 4 verse 3 for thus says the lord to the men of judah and jerusalem break up your fallow ground that's what to preach tell them don't just take for granted come into the house of god go back the same way you came check your life is anything in your heart in your life which is displeasing to god break up your fallow ground so not among sons circumcise yourselves unto the lord take away the first king of your heart ye men of judah and inhabitants of jerusalem lest my fury my judgment come forth like fire and burn that none 
can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Let sinners know they are evil, they are sinful, they are transgressors, and the way of transgressors will be hard. Chapter 7 Sound evangelistic ministry, ministers that can save souls and sanctify saints. Chapter 7 of Jeremiah, reading from verse 3, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. There's need for repentance. There is need for coming out of sin and coming to the Lord. And mend your ways and your doings. And I will cause you to dwell in this place. That's the condition. And mend your ways and mend your doings. Verse 4. Trust ye not in lying words. Saying the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if ye thoroughly amend your ways, wholeheartedly amend your ways, sincerely amend your ways and your doings, if ye thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt. Then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land I gave to your fathers forever and ever God make us faithful preachers that call people to repentance in Jesus name chapter 26 Jeremiah 26 reading from verse 1 in the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim son of Josiah King of Judah came this word from the Lord saying, Thus says the Lord, Stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak unto all the cities of Judah. Speak unto all the cities of Judah. Let all the people hear. Let all the local churches hear the same word which come to worship in the Lord's house, all the words that I command thee, all the words that I command thee to speak unto them, diminish not a word. If so be that they will hack him and turn every man from his evil way, turn Every man from his evil way that sounds ministry message. Tell them, turn from the evil way. Somebody shouldn't be in a local church for one whole year and he has not turned, he has not repented, and we shouldn't bring anyone whose life is not clear that he has repented into the workforce. We shouldn't try to encourage anybody with the sacred duty, responsibility of ministering in any area of the work in the church only to tie him down. That will not take him to heaven. Let him repent. He says that everyone turn. From his evil way that I may repent me of that of the evil which I purpose to do unto them because of their evil doings. And then in verse 4, and thou shalt say unto them, 
Thus says the Lord, if ye will not hearken to me, to walk in my law, which I said before you, to hearken to the words of my servants, the prophets, whose, whom I sent unto you, both rising up early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened. Then will I make this house like Shiloh, and will make this city a curse to all the nations of the earth. So the priests and the prophets and the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. They will hear you. Like Jeremiah was faithful, you'll be faithful in Jesus' name. Look at verse 13. Therefore now, I made your ways and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord your God and the Lord will repent of the evil that he has pronounced against you. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 5 verses 6 and 7 Isaiah 55 verses 6 and 7 Seek ye the Lord while he may be found Call ye upon him while he is near Let the wicked forsake his way That's the true prophet of God That's the faithful minister of God Let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him after he has repented after he has turned from evil let him return to our God for he will abundantly pardon we're coming to second Corinthians chapter 5 second Corinthians chapter 5 verses 10 and 11 second corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 for we must all appear before the judgment seat of christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done whether it be good or bad you will not do bad. You will not do evil. If you are going to do good, look at verse 11. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also made manifest in your consciences the goal of preaching personal preaching one-to-one -one, public preaching in the bus on the train in the taxi anywhere pulpit preaching in the church the goal of preaching is to save souls sanctify saints empower believers for faithful service the purpose of preaching is not to entertain sinners it's not to make sinners love us but to turn from their sins and to turn to the savior number one is not to entertain sinners number two is not to encourage sinfulness sinfulness shall we continue in sin that grace may abound no we should not encourage people in sinfulness if you're talking about the love of god in such a way that you're saying that god is no more angry at sin no more angry at sinners 
Anybody can do whatever he wants and God is love. That's encouraging sinfulness. The purpose of preaching is not to encourage sinfulness. The purpose of preaching is not to encourage, it's not to excuse sensuality. Sensuality. You know, people are preaching and they say, now, enough of preaching. All that we have been preaching all these years, that's enough. And also say, like preaching, 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 go ahead. But we are going to now give our body to the Lord to rejoice before the Lord. And then they begin to throw themselves around, men and women, boys and girls, married and unmarried, and the excuse sensuality. That's not the purpose of church. That's not the purpose of preaching. The purpose of preaching is not to extol superstition. The superstition of idol worshippers, the, super, uh, the superstition of uh, village people, the superstition of traditional people, our preaching, what the Lord has sent us to do, is not to extol and to exalt superstition. Number five, it is not to emulate seducers. There are people who are seducing other people. And they entice other people into the ways of sin. Our preaching is not for that. Our preaching is supposed to be serious. Our preaching is supposed to be convicting. Our preaching is supposed to be pungent. Our preaching is supposed to wake people up so that they repent of their sin. Our preaching is not to emulate seducers. The people who are giving to entertainment and, you know, the, uh, the things that they do, that's in the world, that's their profession. We don't carry that into the church. Number six is not to exploit society. Preaching is not to exploit. Exploit the rich. Exploit the rich people, the wealthy people, and talk and say things that will make them dip their hands in their pocket and empty their bank accounts onto us, onto our church. That's not the purpose of preaching. It's to call for repentance. It's to call for people to come out of sin and come away from darkness and come into the light. Don't preach to exploit society. And our preaching is not to elevate self. Elevate self. Talk about Christ. Talk about yourself. When I was, when I was, when I was. And the places have gone and the place I am. And my place of work and my salary. And my remuneration. And you know, do you church? You cannot pay me. You cannot pay me. All I take, I just take that just so that God can bless you. If you know what I have, ah, that's not preaching. It is not to elevate self. Talk about Christ and talk about the sin of the sinners and bring them out of sin. Enlighten sinners to flee from future judgment. Persuade the sinners to repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior and disciple, the true converts to live in holiness so that they can get to heaven. The Lord will use you more. I said the Lord will use you more. But you must be faithful to the calling the Lord has given us. So that people will not say on the final day, the harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. Acts chapter 17 Acts chapter 17, verse 30. And in times of this ignorance, God went out, but now commandeth, how many people? Commandeth, that is in the present continuous tense, commandeth, commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Sinners, 
will repent through your preaching. Second Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. We're reading from verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards what not willing that any should perish. People will not perish under your ministry. And people will not perish under your teaching and under your preaching. Amen. God is not willing that any should perish, but that how many people? How many people? In our crusades, how many people? In our house fellowship, how many people? In our local church, how many people? In our headquarters church, how many people? That all should come to repentance. All you need to bring people to repentance, the Lord will give unto you. As you faithfully serve the Lord, He will faithfully empower you. You will not be a false preacher. You will not be an enticing preacher. You will not be a false preacher. You will be a faithful preacher. And this work of God will prosper in your hands in Jesus' name. Amen for yourself. Amen for me. Amen for the whole church. This work will prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's rise up and open our hearts, open our mouths, open everything within us from the word of God we have heard so that our hearers, our members will not say on the last day the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and they are not saved. Through you, many will be saved, sanctified, made ready for heaven.